Wow, these are so neat. What's this technique called? Pleats are defined as fabric folded over itself and secured in place. I may have done this a time or two on accident. In this video, I wanna show you the four most common pleats you will find and how to achieve each one. Pleats can be functional or decorative, so let's go explore. These plates are created by determining the width, then folding an equal amount of the fabric from each side of that width to fold and meet in the middle on top of the pleat. Once you determine the width of the pleats, mark the width across the length of your fabric inside the seam allowance. Starting at one end, take the first mark, then fold it over to meet the second mark, pin in place. Then take the third mark and fold it to meet the second mark. The first, second, and third marks will all meet at the same location. Make sure the first and third folds are snug against each other. Repeat the same pattern of folding and pinning across the length of your fabric. Double check that the folds are smooth with no extra fabric tucked inside. Press the pleats before sewing a basting row within the seam allowance. You will see box pleats most often on the tops of curtains or clothing that may need a little added curve like on the waist or under a bust line. These are created in the same manner as box pleats but in reverse so that the pleat lands on the outside rather than the inside. Just like box pleats, you will mark the width across the length of the fabric. Starting at one end, take the first mark, then fold it under to meet the second mark on the back side, pin in place. Then take the third mark and fold it to meet the second mark in the back. Repeat for the remaining marks across the fabric. If these pleats are placed close together, you will have a look that blends both box pleats and inverted pleats. Press the pleats before sewing a basting row within the seam allowance. Inverted pleats are used more commonly in fashions to minimize the bunching and volume in unflattering places. You will find kick pleats, a type of inverted pleat, at the back of a skirt, which gives the wearer more room to walk without tearing the seams of the skirt. Knife plates can be big or small, but the key is that they face the same direction and they typically continue down the entire length of the fabric. These plates are created at three times the length of the desired pleat width. Mark your placement lines alternating the lines as short, then long. For learning purposes, mark the lines as A, B, C. Fold line A toward line C. Line B will be in the middle of the fold. Then fold line B behind line A, pin in place. Your next set of lines will start at the next line, what would be line A in the next set, repeating the same process. Line A from the first pleat will line up with line B from the second pleat. Continue across the length of the fabric. Press the pleats before sewing a basting row within the seam allowance. Knife pleats are used on the width of skirts, including table skirts and ruffling fabrics with lower volume. They also make a great decorative accent on pillows, aprons, and upholstery. Accordion pleats are a type of knife fleet, but they are much more narrow and always close together. Pin tuck pleats are created by pinching the fabric, folding away from the fabric, and sewing along the length. Pin tucks are typically very narrow, so when marking your pleats, they will be close together. For learning purposes, draw a straight line at every other mark from one side of the fabric to the other. This is the line you will stitch upon. Starting at one end, take the first mark, then fold it under to meet the second mark at the back side, pin in place. Flip over to the opposite side of the fabric and repeat. This will leave a straight line back to back where you will sew to create your pin tuck. Continue pinning both pairs of lines together at both sides of the fabric until you reach the end of your fabric or the designated pleating area. Pull the pinched fabric out straight. 
Then press each pleat individually before you sew along the lines. Once you have each pin tuck pleat sewn in place, press the pleats in one direction so that they lay flat. Baste in place at both sides of the fabric. This will allow you to sew the rest of your project with minimal bulk. You can play around with the direction of pleats by sewing the top in one direction and the bottom in another, or even sewing a straight stitch across the middle. Pin tuck pleats add texture and visual interest to an otherwise boring project. This can make some really fun and interesting blouses and decorative pillows. Okay, okay, you may be asking yourself, why am I doing origami and not sewing? But in the end, you're gonna find out that each one of these can be useful and fun in their own way. Get creative and see where it takes you. Let me know down in the comments which pleating technique looks like your favorite or one you've tried before that maybe I didn't mention. And now that you know all about pleats, head on over here for even more useful sewing techniques. And I'll see you next time. Before you hop away, drop down to the video description to sign up for my newsletter and receive this frog coin pouch pattern for free.